Uh, Paul, I've seen you in just about your entire career. If you don't mind, I'd like to sort of kick off uh, the interview with you. And my first question is, how does an East Coast guy, a graduate of Yale, son of a baseball commissioner, start his career, apparently, at a little theater out here in Seattle called the Annex Theater. I yeah. was stunned to see that. Yeah, Tell me no, about how that happened. Oh, I don't know. I had to get away from New Haven. I went as far as I could on the continental United States from New Haven. <laughs> Basically, straight line west, and I ended up here. And I came out here intending to do other things, and I ended up sort of working at that theater, which, you know, it was a great little place. They didn't pay anything. <laughs> and, of course not. But I, I ended up sort of accidentally getting an agent out here, and I thought, oh, you know, I'll see where that goes. And I actually got some work, so I started making a living as an actor. So I figured, I'm making a living doing this. I might as well just kind of keep, keep doing it. So... So, sort of accidental. Yeah. Wow. And so how long were you here in Seattle? I lived here about three years, from 1989-92. And how much did you do? Were you steadily employed? As a, I at ended up being fairly steadily employed, yeah. I mean, I was pretty much willing to do anything. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I mean, amazing. Everything, everything short of porn I was willing to do. <laughs> That's and, incredible. Uh, you know, I would have done that if people had been interested. <laughs> but I, I, I did pretty much anything. So I... Yeah, I actually ended up making a living, and at that time, you know, it wasn't, I'm sure it's a way more expensive city to live in now than it was then. Yeah. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't terribly expensive, so I, I could, I could survive. As the, a, this final question, how, how did Paul Giamatti decide to play Paul Giamatti? <laughs> well, that's what I mean. I mean, it, it was, it was, I think in some ways, Sophie, and you should, Sophie would probably be more interesting on this than I am, but I think that she was thinking of me in some ways, in terms of, something of a persona I have from some of the movies I've done. So I knew, I sensed what she wanted me to be playing off of, in a way, a certain kind of neurotic, self-involved kind of uh, guy. So, but as I say, you know, it, it, it was a character, so I just had to do what she had written down on the page, which was this very kind of classic kind of New York actor-y, sort of self-serious, self-involved, neurotic guy. Which is no, no, no. Not a big near. stretch from yeah. what you're asking me. I, I, I hope it's a big stretch from you. That's good. So, Sophie, so to back up, we're talking about Cold Souls, your uh, first feature, has an incredible cast, as I'm sure you well know. But what I thought most interesting reading about the uh, background of this movie is where it came from. This, how, does a, how does a book, a, a Jungian book, or a book by Jung, and a dream about Woody Allen end up being made into a movie? Tell me about how that process came to pass. I don't know. I think it's you know strange synaptic connection in your <laughs> brain after... I was really intensively watching the old vintage Woody Allen movies. I was in South of France, like, trying to find inspiration for a script and literally chronologically watching, you know, all his old comedies. Really? Sleeper and uh, Bananas, and I'm a huge fan, and something happened, I don't know, I had that dream, and uh, and the night I finished the book, Man in Search, uh, in Search of a Soul, I got the dream of, you know, Woody Allen looking in this little box and seeing that his soul was a chicken, you know, and so <laughs> then I thought, I might as well write a screenplay from that idea. <laughs> and out of that, do you feel that this is a Woody Allen-esque kind of movie? Well, I think there are a lot of uh, influences. You know, I admire him so much, and I've really been raised in France. We have this admiration for Woody Allen. He's a sort of god. <laughs> <laughs> he's bigger in France than he's here. There have been a lot of comparisons, I know, to uh, Charlie Kaufman. It has this kind of being John Malkovich or being Paul Giamatti kind of quality. Do you find those comparisons flattering or irritating? <laughs> They were flattering to a point, and now they're getting really irritating. <laughs> <Are they? Okay. laughs> because, uh, you know, if, for instance, Michel Gondry does The Science of Sleep, no one tells him, are you doing a Charlie Kaufman movie? Yeah. Because he's Michel Gondry, you know, he's established. But I'm a first-time filmmaker, so everyone is like... And also, I think it's very American that you always have to compare to another movie. It's always like, this movie meets this movie. Yeah. Uh, and for me, the influence is, you know, I... I would rather have people say it's more Woody Allen, or yeah. and, but I, I admire Charlie Kaufman, I think he's brilliant and I love his movies. Paul, I would like to shift, uh, shift the attention to you as an actor. Mm -hmm. This is a movie about acting, but you had this amazing career, and again, I don't want to keep reiterating the fact that you start off in Seattle, but I'd love to yeah, take, no, take yeah. credit for that. Uh, has your career progressed how you imagined it would? 
when you were dreaming your dreams? <laughs> <laughs> I no, no, it hasn't. I I didn't really have any particular. I mean, as I say, I, it was somewhat accidental. So I didn't have a whole lot of sense of where it was going to go or what it was going to be like. And so it's been a series of kind of funny detours, and and it's been very patchy and and crazy and. And it's a couple steps forward and steps back and steps to the side. And one of the things I liked about it and still like about it is that I don't know where it's going to go and <laughs> yeah. what I'm going to do next. And, and I actually really like that. Yeah. I'm just wondering, what were your impressions of Seattle at the time, besides just it just being a getaway? Because I completely get that as an yeah. actor. Oh, God, I don't know. It was a fantastic place. And I mean, I, as I say, I sort of stumbled into this theater thing, and that was incredibly lively here. Um, no, I, it was such a completely different place from where I'd come from. I mean, I'd never, yeah. I mean, I came from a very kind of horrible little town in New England, <laughs> which has a very nice university in the middle of it, but that's about it. And I don't know, this was such a wonderfully different place physically and the, the emotion, it's a very sort of relaxed place and everybody was sort of, I mean, it was. I guess that's when it was really booming, this city. And you definitely yeah. had this feeling that it was very exciting. So you were here in the late 80s, early 90s? 89 to 92, yeah. Wow. So I guess that was one the of the... grunge years. Too. Right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which I completely missed. But <laughs> a lot of us did. Yeah, I guess so. So I wasn't really all that aware of it. But but no, I, it was a fantastic place to be. I, I, I still dream about living here. Um, I mean, I literally have dreams that take place in Seattle because it was yeah. such a wonderful place. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, listen, we're uh, we're proud to uh, claim you as our own from now on. Yeah. I think I think I will. Please. It's a it's I I love your career. Thanks. I love I love what you're doing. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks. Man. Thanks a lot, Paul. Yeah. Thank yeah. You so much. Bye bye, Sophie. Thank you. Thank you.